fellas. Well, Joe here, Feral Woodcraft. Um, again, you guys know that. I don't know why I keep on introing it with that, but uh, anyway, it is what it is. Um, a lot of talk here lately about one stick fires. Uh, I've done this several times on film. Uh, hit it up again, uh, this time with more uh, emphasis on the fire and not necessarily a knife review or um, meeting bush class requirements because bush class isn't what this is about. So. Um, Anyway, um, I'm just going to take my time, uh, do this right, do it how I do it when I'm not necessarily uh, doing knife reviews or performance for video and I don't know what I'll cut and what I won't. Um, I'm going to aim to keep this uh, video short, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of scenes cut out, but uh, the pertinent part will be there. Um, and uh, if you want to know what I do between scenes, just elongate what you see. So just more of the same. Alright, well for this I went and found a uh, down cedar tree and cut off a, a workable piece. Um, to the heart of this challenge I'm not going to use this inner bark for uh, lighting it off. That being said, a darn toot and I'm going to save it for my tinder bag. figured it's high time I get this stocking wolf to work on camera. I love this knife. It is a great design if you ask me. I don't use it as much as I would like to just simply because the handle is too small so it makes my hand hurt and get uh, tired in short order, but uh, that is not the designer's fault, that is the manufacturer's fault. Now a lot of folks, at least the guys that I've seen here recently, my buddies, are hitting this up as an axe challenge. Yeah. Sorry, fellas. I prefer my knife. And as you can see, Stalking Wolf doesn't uh, shy away from that at all. Anyway, I split it down to eighths or sixteenths, just depending on how the wood talks at the time. It talks. Uh, it's not like it speaks, like uh, Jamie Burley said in one of his recent videos. It's not like it's talking to me. It's just uh, you pay attention to what it does and doesn't want to do at the time. By the way, Jamie, if you happen to watch this, your your uh, self bow on um, Pathfinder page TV is awesome, by the way. Alright. The goal here is three different sizes pencil lead, pencil, and thumb size. Basically, I, I'm, I equate it to a twig fire, if anybody's familiar with that. Same basic reference but instead of getting twigs as, as a pencil lead size and then small branches and we'll save that one pad over there um, from saplings and stuff for a pencil size and then branches straight out for uh, thumb size you gotta make them that's the whole idea so just keep on taking them down it 
So you get a good base with all three. And like I said just a minute ago, let each individual cut of wood tell you what it wants to do. If it's splitting out, pay attention to the split. If it wants to get smaller, follow it. Put the smaller piece in your smaller pile. Seems pretty straightforward, actually. Time consuming, yeah. Makes for one heck of a fire. Now we save a few good pieces for making good shavings. And I will say guys, in my opinion, the more the smaller stuff you make, the better off you're going to be. <sighs> Gotta be honest guys, I've missed using my stock. I have missed it. Hey, babe. You know, sometimes I wonder if we're not too concerned about the way they used to do things in the past. You know, as in, gotta use my axe for this, or my knife for that. I, uh, I don't know. I'm not critiquing anybody. I have honestly used an axe for this before. And really, this is much more precise. And quite frankly, at least depending on the type of wood. If I was using persimmon or oak or something like that for this, for some of this, it would be more uh, time effective or time prudent to use an axe, at least for part of the process. But it kind of goes back to the whole one tool option thing. They use a tool what it's made for. There's no one tool that fits the bill for everything. <clears throat> and here I am saying that using a, a tool that's, you know, is designed to be a one tool option or as close to it as it can be. And, you know, I, the one tool option's a myth in my mind. And uh, it, it's just, it's not going to happen. It is not there. But uh, using an axe was for where it fits the bill. Use a knife where it fits the bill. And, uh, there you go. That's my opinion. But anyway, let's make some shavings, guys. And I'm out of practice with the old stocking wolf, but, uh... Another thing that I see commonly, which I've made a mistake even knowingly sometimes, even in my last video, is not enough prep. You cannot prep enough, especially when it comes to shavings. If you don't have enough shavings, you're going to have a hard time getting it lit off of a ferro rod, more than likely. And my last video, part of my issue in getting things started is that I didn't take the time to prep enough. I didn't have enough time, honestly. So I decided to make do. I thought I was running out of time, which I was, but I should have taken more time to uh, prepare properly. 
and I think it would have helped quite a bit with the wind and the damp situation. You thought I had more surface area down there to catch the sparks and get that little bit of flame I was getting quite regularly established. So on a log like this, how I regularly do this, which this is typically how I start a fire, or make a fire anyway, is I will spend probably just about as much time on shavings as I will on preparing the rest of the, the original fire as far as the pencil lead size, the pencil size, and the thumb size. And there we go. There are my kids being statues. They wanted to be a part of my one stick fire video. So there they are. Statues. And there is my almost eight year old making a face at the camera. Uh oh. Statues are moving. Statues are moving. And they're showing their heinies to the camera. <laughs> and now they're just being weird and blushing for the camera. All right, let's talk fire. Anyway, this is just how I do it. <clears throat> There's no one right way, in my opinion. But have your base, no matter what ground you're on basically, have a base, unless it's perfectly dry with nothing around it to um, catch a flame that's going to run away from you, and then have a prop to uh, you put your your nest and materials right here to start the fire with, and have a prop to put your uh, your other tenders on, you, your pencil, pencil lead size, your pencil and your, your thumb size, that way oxygen can get in from the sides and not much from this side, but it, it lets it breathe, and uh, when you put stuff on it, it doesn't smother what flame you have out. So there you have it. All right, let me get uh, set up and show you what I got, and we'll get this fire started, hopefully. This is with a different camera, because uh, honestly, I want a different perspective. And uh, my normal camera is a pain in the rear. Um, it's attached to the tripod at the moment. So, and yeah, there's a beer over there. So anyway, um, there's a fair amount of work that goes into this. Um, as you can see, the amount of shavings we have right there, feather sticks and shavings, that's um, smorgasbord in there, just depending on how the wood wanted to go. Um, here we have the pencil lead size-ish, some bigger, some smaller, you know, whatever. There we have the pencil size, you know, again, some bigger, some smaller. And then we have the thumb size over here, and then I got a pile across the way, right yeah, right there, um, of stuff to continue the fire and stuff over my right shoulder, which, you know, you guys don't need to be concerned about that because you're not going to be here for the, the rest of the fire, so it doesn't matter. But uh, anyway, like I said, got about 20 minutes worth of work into this, all with a knife, no axe, um, had a saw, uh, a laplander that uh, cut that log into the piece that I decided to use, and that's it. Um, so 20 minutes worth of work, you know, not a big deal. So uh, let's uh, get this fire started and see what happens. And that right there is a benefit having a ton of shavings. What was that, three strikes, two strikes? And blammo. Turn that sucker over. You got all the time in the world. Like I said, guys, right there is the benefit of spending as much or more time on your shavings as you do on prepping the rest of your fire. It just makes it easy. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, that is making fire. They're still being statues. Uh oh. I see you. Right. And like I said, I know I chose a easy-ish wood because it's nice and soft. It burns well. Well, you know, I had the pick of the forest, and honestly, if I needed a fire in the forest, that's what I would pick. So, you know, I was being true to myself there, but yet yeah, I have done this with oak. Curry, poplar. Um, and I tried it with persimmon, didn't work so well, but persimmon's a pain. Um, done with pecan. Hey! My little statues. <laughs> I'm making a video! <laughs> anyway, it all works the same. Prep takes a little bit longer on harder woods. But the principles are the same. Get yourself a nice bed of feathers and you're golden. That is the key. The rest, you can fudge. Anyway, my friends, in my opinion, not that I am saying no one has accomplished it yet, but this is how Joe Mobley or Feral Woodcraft does a one-stick fire.